Hi, this is John Lockwood for John Next Door, and this video tutorial is all about using the brand new cornflower die and the cornflower matching stamp. Bring the stamp in, here we go. So if you can see here, I've actually used the cornflower to make quite a pretty flower, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this one, how we actually match up the stamp so that we can do the stamped version, and also how we can do it a little bit differently to give us this more traditional looking cornflower. So to get started, we'll go through the die. I'm just going to take the die, and as you can see, this is in one of my plate designs. So it has the corners missing and all of the pieces that you need on the die. So you've got two large, two medium, two small, and three different sized centers. This will enable you to either make one large flower or three different size flower as was shown on the tag. So to speed things up a little bit, I've already cut one. So I'll show you the pieces. So we get two large pieces, and this has been cut in a piece of the crystal card, two medium, two small, and three centers. Again, a medium, a large, and a small. So to do the simple flower, all we're going to need is some ink, and I'm using the Eyes Ink Rose, a finger dauber, and a pokey tool, a rounded one. So I'm going to make it with a large flower to make it easier to show you. So simply going to take some of the ink once cut, and I'm going to take a little bit of ink on the dauber, and just holding the flower in the air, flick over the end of each petal. And that gives us a really soft look to the colouring, rather than the harsh look if we held it on the ground or on the plate and actually coloured across. So once I finish this one, I can show you. You can see there, it's quite a soft blend. We then just pop it down, take a little bit of the ink and just gently colour in the centre so that the colour comes about a third of the way up from the middle and a third of the way down. So I'm going to do the second one just to show you again. So again, holding the flower in the air, simply colour using the dye-based ink. And I'm using a dye-based ink because dye-based ink is translucent, which means that it sticks very, very easily, but it's not opaque, it's not a solid colour you can see underneath. So you get a lot softer blend than you would with a pigment ink. There we go, that's those two done. And then I'm simply going to take the centre, I'm going to take my finger dauber and just add a little bit of colour gently into the centre, avoiding the little pollen stems all the way around. Now to shape the flower, all we need to do is to take our pokey tool and we're simply going to pull each petal over the pokey tool, quite simply, just like this. So we're curling each petal, very easy to do. And this is made even easier by the fact that the dye actually cuts these two little slits in it for you. So these aren't deboss lines, these are slits, which just make it that little bit easier to curl. And once we've curled it, we're gonna fold each petal into the center, which gives us the shape. There we go. So take the second one, I'm going to do the same again. So just pulling, and I'm just stretching the card and almost shining it gently over the rounded pokey tool, which gives a lovely edge to the flower and folding each individual petal up to the center. Now I'm going to stick these together using the new Craft Artist glue glaze. This makes gluing flowers a lot easier. With the applicator, I'm just going to add a little dab of ink, of ink, a little bit of glue even into the middle, offset the petals and just put it down. And the glue is an instant grab and it just means that you're not getting a big lot of glue in the centre. So we just need to now shape the stamen in the centre of the flower. So I'm going to bring in my little piece of foam and this is a piece of the Crafts 2 flower moulding foam which is very hard. Take my centre, the ball tool and just circle until it cups. I'm pressing quite hard until it cups the stamen in the centre. And we're simply then 
pop again a little dab of the glue glaze in, pick up our centre and pop it into position. And then we get a beautiful flower that looks as if you spent hours at it, but very, very simply. The next technique I want to show you with this is using the stamp. So for this, I'm going to bring in my stamp press. So I'm using the press to impress and I'm going to take my stamp. And the stamp is made exactly the same as the die. So the stamp is in one piece and this one piece, there we go, pull that in. This one piece has all six parts of the flower, but doesn't have the stamens on, but it has the corners the same. So I'm just gonna place that down on my press, close the lid to pick the stamp up. I'm just gonna slide a piece of card in. And again, I'm going to use a little bit of the crystal card and this has been cut to A6 because the stamp has been designed so that it works perfectly on A6 card, meaning that you will get the stamp and the die out four times from any of your A4 or standard letter sized card. So I'm simply going to ink the stamp to start with, with black VersaFine, which is a nice ink, gives you a lovely crisp stamp. And the stamp was designed to give you a very fantasy flower look. So if we stamp it down, you can see you've got a little bit of a heart design inside each of the ends of the petals that isn't designed to stamp clearly. It's designed to give you the feel as if it's going to a heart. Um, it's worked with all of the dots. We can see there very clearly we've got all of those. I've missed a little bit of that end piece. So I'll give that another press but that's stamped clearly. Then all we need to do is to take the die that matches with the stamp. And if you can see, we would match the corners. So corner to corner. However, you can't see through this die. And so you need to make sure it's in the right place. To do that, we take a scrap piece we've already cut and you just line up and it will only line up in one direction. Move it round, there we go. That's the way, so you can see there, that's correct. So what I would then do is I take the die and I line the die up to that cut. So is that right? Yes, it's right. So I know that the die fits on this way. So I simply match corner to corner and because of the way it was designed, you may find that each flower is a little offset, but that's why it has no outside lines. So that if it is a little bit offset, it doesn't actually matter. And all we're going to do is run that through and cut it. So I'm going to cut that now so that you can see it's not something I've pre-prepared. So I'm running that through my machine while that runs through. I'm just gonna close my press and move that out of the way and pop these little bits here that we're waiting, just waiting for my machine to finish cutting. I really think it's important for you to see what it actually cuts as opposed to having one prepared. So you can see there, cut through, we just peel it off and you can see I've gone off a little bit, it makes no difference to this flower. We just pop the pieces out there we go, let's get all of these out. And you can see it's done a fantasy flower look in that we've got them pieced onto there and that little bit of detail. Again, I've gone off slightly, doesn't make a difference. And all I'm going to do, again, I'm just going to curl each petal. I'm going to leave it in the black and white this time. Fold the flowers up to the center. Do the same again with the larger one. There we go, slowly, and pop all those up. And then again, a little bit of glue glaze in the center. We just pop that down and we stick our flower, a second flower on, offset to fill the gap. And then we'll just pull those up, there we go. And we get a totally different look than we did 
with the first. Again, we can pop a center in, but we get that sort of difference, that sort of fantasy flower look that we get from that. So the third way I want to show you is just the technique of how we make almost a more realistic looking, sort of very spiky cornflower. So for this, move those out of the way, I'm just going to use two layers of the medium. And as I was saying earlier, you can see you've got two slits. So the die actually cuts the holes through. So what that means is we can very easily pinch each petal and it will fold along each of those cut lines. So you don't need to use any tools, you don't need to use any foam molding or anything. We just simply, when you pinch the petal, it automatically wants to fold over or onto those two fold lines. We get quite a 3D look. So I'm just going to do one more and then I will show you a slightly different way to do the center. So again, just going round, folding each one of those. If you do struggle, if you have a little bit of dexterity issue with this, I'm gonna leave it for the last one. What you can do is to take again a pokey tool, pop that in and just fold the petal around the pokey tool. So you can just fold it around that if you struggle pinching them. Okay, this time I'm gonna take just a little bit I've got a dauber here that's got a little bit of blue on this. So this is a little bit of the night, which again is a dye-based ink by eye zinc. So we're just going to colour that, just to add a little bit of shading and colour to it. And again, a little bit in the middle. Take my glue glaze, pop some in, and then we'll offset to give me a real sort of spiky flower. And for the centre of this one, I'm going to take the smallest size of flower that comes with the cornflower set. I'm just going to turn it onto its back and take a ball tool and just go up and down each petal to curl them in. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of the glue glaze and I'm just going to pop a little bit onto each petal. There we go. And then simply take all of those, fold them into the centre and scrunch them all round. There we go, you can see, just scrunch them all round and hold it for a couple of seconds just so that it all glues. There we go, you, this one's going to be difficult, there we go. So I've got one there that's decided he doesn't want to, so probably not enough glue. We'll add a little bit more glue onto him, we'll pull that in. There we go. And I'm just pinching it all at the top to give me the point. And I get that sort of bud look. So I'm going to bring in my flower, pop a little bit of glue in the middle, and then I'm going to affix my center. And I'm just going to kiss the end with a little bit of the blue and pull it up. Just make sure that's stuck properly. So there we've got a very spiky sort of cornflower. You can do a pile of all the same size like this and add the center in with a few beads. We can do the fantasy flower with the stamp or we can do the very pretty simple shaded flower. So there's three or four different ideas of what to do with the new John Nextdoor cornflower stamp and die set. For more inspiration, please visit Facebook and have a look at the John Nextdoor page or why not join the John Next Door Crafting With group, which is a share group full of hints, tips and ideas from the whole crafting community. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.